Hi, you guys. Welcome back to the online show, Sovereign and Strong, How to See Beauty in Chaos, Shift Your Consciousness, and Create Peace Within. I'm your host, Clarita Yeager, and our guest today is the luminous Anaya Sophia. Anaya is a mystic, storyteller, and author of Revelatory Wisdom. She teaches workshops worldwide and is best known for the creation of Sacred Body Awakening. She's a, trailbla she's a trailblazing resource of unapologetic truth and transparent courage for both is both, her heart, excuse me, is both fierce and tender. She carries an oral message that stirs the remembrance of a continuous lineage with the feminine principle that throughout the centuries has preserved its spiritual dignity without the need for permission or recognition from any other source. She's the author of very many books, and currently lives in southern France and operates a B&B with her beloved husband. So welcome, Anaya. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just, I love it already. <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to jump right in because you speak with such reverence and truth and courage, and you're really like a breath of fresh air, I think, for anybody who finds you. And mm -hmm. so I want to start with kind of a big question, and that is, in your opinion, where do you think we, kind of as humanity, <laughs> got a little lost on our way to get where we are? Oh, wow. Hmm. Well, there are definitely a few key moments that jump out for me as I did my research to try to answer this very same question. Yeah. I think one of the ones that really broke my heart was the very severe taking away of the matriarchal goddess worshipping and also temple days. Mm -hmm. When we were worshipping the goddess, all countries, all villages, all tribes would have had some kind of temple space where men and women worked to facilitate the arrival of the Divine Mother, of the Sacred Feminine, in form, and to deliver this as bodily medicine to other men, women, and children mm -hmm. in the most holy, the most clean, the most reverent and joyful way. And according to our history books, it appears as if almost overnight that was like snatched from us. It was severely replaced with a whole new concept of one God and that God was a father figure and that the temple is now no longer operative and everybody who works there has to, has to leave or change jobs. And now we have a church where someone else is going to pray for us and speak on behalf of the divine and finding it in the gentle caring arms of another is no longer allowed mm. and this wound is twofold the women the feminine aspect who worked there men and women so suddenly they are now forbidden to do what they are born to do and that it is dangerous to continue on. So there's one wound for the feminine, which is suppression of that which is innate and, and in their design to be. And then for the masculine, he or she can no longer find that forgiveness, that patience, that comfort, and that trust. And now the feminine and the masculine are on their own mm. and a new way of connecting with the divine has suddenly come in and no one knows how to do it i think that is a very significant moment in our history mm -hmm. that laid the ground for uh, for more to come in on top of that could be original wound yeah. Yeah. that for me is the biggie for me yeah no, I thank you for sharing that. That was so beautiful. And so that leads me kind of to the next question is what, since we are sort of in a, in a phase of recorrection, if you will, 
um, or rebalance, what is what do you think the role of the feminine is, the feminine and the masculine, the divine feminine and the divine masculine is right now? Oh, I love your questions. <laughs> they are on the edge of my own contemplation. Don't even have the answer right now, but perhaps we can explore together. Yes. Because yes. It's, it's my question. This is my question. This is the question of our generation. Good, good. Yeah. What would the yeah. feminine be doing now? I feel, because I am one, <laughs> um, the wisdom is inside of us. In our shock, in our trauma, we would have most likely have gone into a shocked and tense state, which I feel trapped the wisdom within, mm -hmm. for good reason. So it's held within the body. Now we have to do the unwinding work of relaxing and restoring trust and restoring honor and you know my word is my truth and and this will bring tremendous relaxation to the body and we will remember our wisdom mm. stage two we now have to represent it to the world and of course the last time we did that it was not good yeah. so there will be a whole barricade of fear standing before us just like we see the police in Portland, you know, the, the two tribes facing each other, the young protesters and the police. What we're seeing is what we will also face on the inside. Mm -hmm. Dare I bring this again? Dare I pronounce what I am capable of facilitating? So that's the feminine. The feminine work is to remember to claim and then to pronounce and that means that means a mouth that means a voice yeah, <laughs> this is not a quiet business this is a i am ready yes. <laughs> for the masculine dare he or she in masculine form dare they believe it is possible to find that level of safety, trust, and divinity in the feminine container once again. Because mm. it's not about massage, it's not about tantra, it's not about a love affair. It is far deeper than that. It is about can my soul be delivered to the lap of God again? This is a soul sharing. Mm. Now, if that happens, and it must happen. All this other business with the Epsteins and the Chicago bridges being raised and Portland and Beirut. When I say water off a duck's back, what I mean is it doesn't frighten us anymore. Yes. We are sovereign, we are awake, and we can respond appropriately now to what is happening. So to me, it's a three-fold, it's a three-step process. The feminine's got to bring it. Yeah. The masculine has to trust at that deepest possible level again. Then there will be union. And then we stand back to back and face this, what is just spiraling around us in the news. That's all of that resonates that's beautiful and so powerful but it starts so subtly um you know as within so without and that's that's really where you know the evolution or revolution whatever word you want to use is right now yes yeah yeah and to you know since we have both of those sides in within us how do we integrate them you know because we have the divine masculine and the divine feminine in, in within each one of us. And so we kind of swing, depending on what's needed, we can put our emphasis on either one. Are you talking about more of an integration of them also within? Oh, yes, ourself? absolutely. Abs I'm talking about a physical coming together of these two energies in male and female form or same sex, but one is obviously feminine and the other one's obviously masculine, two different poles. Yeah. So that piece definitely has to be acted out, enacted. Yeah. 
but also if you put a big prayer out there you really petition the opportunity to actually do this for yourself to integrate i assure you the perfect set of circumstances events and people <laughs> will show up to totally take you through yeah. that eye of the needle and, and I feel it's so close. This opportunity now is so close. It's like people have been saying this word, the great reckoning. It's all just here. Everything is mm -hmm. all just here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, it truly everything that we are seeing as a mirror, right? Yes. Or what we are struggling with internally or what the challenges internally and everywhere you turn, there's, there's always something new to, to explore within yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, hmm. I feel like our conversation could go on forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you, cause this is so juicy. So thank you for just being so honest with us here. I really appreciate that. Um, so do you think right now, do you think many women are in the process of that remembering of their like inherent wisdom or like their medicine? Kind of that step one that you had just talked about i do i do but there is definitely uh an element to look out for um i'm on a gnostic path i'm on a i'm on a sophia path so the word archon is a is a normal word for my vocabulary an archon is a temptation a seduction a force intending to sway us from our full remembering mm. it's a part of creation it's it's been here since the beginning mm -hmm. you know at its most nicest it's just an annoying little crafty play thing at its most awful it's um it's a dark depressive you know like a crocodile it's gonna take you down and it could last for days the feminine has a energy that tracks it and it looks in our age as vanity mm. as fickleness and as um yeah you know, I, I don't i can't remember the woman maybe it was a man but there's a myth and uh, this person just keeps on looking in the mirror because he or she is just like, wow, narcissist. amazing. I'm so amazing. <laughs> yes. I think it's narcissist, isn't it? Yes, that's right. That's that yeah. narcissist or something. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's where we get that word narcissistic and narcissism right. from. Right. We right. have to be really careful of that um, path, parallel path. It's very good at mimicking authenticity and sovereignty. Mm. I'm sure you know what I mean because we've all seen it on Facebook and Instagram. I have done it. That's why I know how close to the real path it tracks you. Mm. But guys, it's the power piece. The guys it's the status the money the items you know look at my car look at my house look at my bank account for, for the ladies it's that vanity piece we have to just be aware that our awakening is not serving that and of course we all want to be beautiful we all want to make a nice picture <laughs> by all means make yeah. a nice picture especially if you have felt that you weren't beautiful and you didn't have your power and you didn't have your grace but at a certain point we have to stop making the nice pictures and zoom right in on what's important yeah. and just get down and and do yeah. yeah thank you for sharing that i was not familiar with that word archon a Archon, yes. In in the sort of Bible, it, it would be like a, a deadly sin. Okay. It's okay. there's there's like seven. There's seven of them. Seven mm -hmm. temptations. Seven seductions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That. Thank you for making that so relevant to the times right now, too. Yeah. So I want to ask you, what does sovereignty mean to you? Sovereignty to me is. 
that is what we're doing right here. <laughs> we're talking, honestly, we're on the edge. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what you're about to, <laughs> to say next. And I absolutely in the moment don't have an answer, but I'm willing to start speaking. Mm. So perhaps sovereignty is messy courage <laughs> because we're not polished yeah. yet. Yes. We're, we're, we're feeling around in the dark still, but we're willing to do it. Mm. And to me, that is such a major, exciting sort of new turn on. Mm. I, I love people who are willing to like, you know, feel their way. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's sovereignty. I know the end, the end vision of sovereignty is like a person standing there in their sovereignty and they're absolutely true and they're absolutely immaculate. But I don't think that's around yet. Yeah. I think there's, there. <laughs> there's folks like me and you, you know, and, and what I love about it is together we get there. Mm -hmm. I'm not even sure we can become sovereign by ourselves. <laughs> we need yeah. one another. Yes. Yeah. To po polish things off. Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you. You just showed me an edge. Thanks very yeah. much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love that because, yeah, it's, we don't operate in a bubble. So <laughs> it's only with the interaction and the resistance that sometimes comes up that we learn to know ourselves even more or see the parts of ourselves even more. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, and it definitely requires, like you said, I like the, the courage to just kind of be there and show up and yeah. also be vulnerable because sometimes things work out and sometimes they don't. And that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm. Like like today, you know, at the moment, I'm waiting to know whether PT and myself have got the, the go ahead on a new house. Mm. You know, so this morning I was moping around. <laughs> I was sat in my chair, just like a zombie, just staring at the garden because everything's in limbo. Mm. And I, I tuned in. I said, Holy Spirit, please help me move me beyond this point. You know, nothing's happening. And Holy Spirit said, you need to have a little cry. Mm. You, because underneath this stasis, there's this tremendous sadness, mm -hmm. A, of grieving the loss of this house, and also the possibility the new one won't come off. So that's sovereignty. Sovereignty, to me, isn't about being impeccably perfect and you know, accountable and filled with integrity. That's an aspect. Another part is to listen to that little voice, or rather massive voice, and, and <laughs> respond. You know, so off, I, so off I went, played a nice little piece of piano music, tears started to flow, and I'm alive and I'm awake again, and I'm inspired, and things are moving. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. We'll put all, all, of our, all of our best for it working uh, out for your highest and best. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, what would you um, What would you recommend for the for the viewers to help them sort of awaken their sacred spirit within? If this is something new to them, I would say, if there is someone listening or watching us and saying to to themselves. I don't actually have a spirituality. I'm interested, yeah. but I don't need to actually have one. Mm -hmm. I would say, hey, check out your younger years mm -hmm. because I cannot help but feel it came to us at a certain age, maybe five, six, seven years old. And we had a bit of an experience, but then we kind of grew out of it. I would say, use your inner detective to just scan those younger years to see if something did happen you know it could have been a moment in nature it could have been a moment in church it could have been a, a just something mm -hmm. and start right there so that is your foundational slab you start from right there and you just pick up the conversation where you left off mm -hmm. And I can say that from experience. So I did have a very, uh, I had a beautiful relationship 
with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, but not in a religious way, not in a church way, more of an artistic way, actually. I just used to look at the art and go, wow, what's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then off I went and I did my yoga and I tried this and I tried that and, you know, gurus and ashrams and Vipassana and fasting. So many, 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 many ways of connecting with the divine. And in the end, I just came straight back to being five years old, getting into bed and doing your prayers at night. And that's my foundational slab. And that's where I found actually the most authentic way to pray. So I've just done a great big circle and come straight back to where I started off. <laughs> oh, I think that's the human way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, thank you for, I like the way that you put that a foundational slab because it can be mm. something, it doesn't have to be this difficult thing to just reconnect with, yeah. with the magic. Uh, yeah. The magic. If, if yeah. you got simple. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. And thank you for sharing that story too. Oh. <laughs> I hope a lot of people can relate to that. Um, so before we wrap today, I know that Anaya has a gift for the viewers, which is a transmission, I believe, kind yeah. of waiting to see how that would sort of unfurl today after our conversation. Yeah. Um, but what are you feeling today that you'd like to offer? Well, actually, the there is, there is a good, you know, going back to what we just ended on, I put together a transmission um, I think it's called something like reclaiming your faith mm -hmm. and it's about exactly what we've just spoken about where you can recognize you certainly were in contact with something there's no doubt about it mm -hmm. but over the years maybe a marriage maybe a divorce maybe a job loss maybe an illness maybe something has just distracted you and pulled you away and so this is a very gentle and very considerate transmission that will sort of support you and escort your way slowly back to that time where you can say, oh yeah, I was in connection mm. with something rather fine back then. And I think that will be a nice transmission for this moment because if we've got our faith, you know, if we pray or meditate or breathe, whatever the method is, and we know we're connecting with something sovereign, then by golly, we can get through this. We can get through this. I think that will be, yeah, that's perfect. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. um, and for the people who aren't quite sure, like what a transmission is, can you kind of explain how you, yes. how that what you're doing. <laughs> well, a transmission is like a mystical storytelling. So I use my voice to be a little guide and sort of guide you in your own imagination to recognizable and familiar places, which will produce feelings inside of you, which will get your sort of biology uh, mirroring the inner spaces that we are traveling. So to the brain and your anatomy, your body thinks you're really there. Yeah. So you will su start secreting happy <laughs> hormones, bliss hormones, love hormones, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of like, uh, yeah, mystical storytelling. And all you do is you just sit or lie down with your eyes closed mm -hmm. and just follow the tale. Perfect. Mystical storytelling can change your biology and change your mood. And like you said, love and bliss hormones. So who yes. doesn't? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So for the viewers, just uh, follow the link and you'll be able to access that from Anaya. So um, yeah, enjoy that and hit reply and let me know to this email and let me know what you think of it because I can't wait to hear it myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So um, thank you guys so much to the audience for showing up here today. Thank you, Anaya, for your wisdom and your heart and your voice to this mm -hmm. conversation. And uh, we will see you guys in the next interview to help you remain sovereign and strong through these times. So.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs>